Hello everybody! I have something new to try today. We're going to be working with Resincrete. So I was on Amazon the other day and um, looking around and I found this. It had a $10 coupon so I thought, mm. um, actually no, it was a $15 coupon. So it was regular $35 and it was marked down to $20. I thought, well, you know what? Let's give it a shot. Uh, so today we're going to... I, just got these new molds and they're succulents so I thought this would be a great uh, medium to use to make my succulent and I'm going to make a succulent garden and put it in my new tray I got as well so the instructions say to mix this up 100 to 30 by weight so I have my scale ready to go I'm going to use these little uh, port um, disposable cups and I'm going to measure 30, gra 30 grams of water to 100 grams of resincrete. Now, it does say on the instructions not to use, uh, it says right here, where is it? Uh, and I can't find it now, but it said, oh yeah, not suitable for resin pigment. Well, I'm not really sure. Does that mean I can't use these or you know this type of pigment I'm not really sure are alcohol inks um, so I'm going to try a couple to see if they don't turn out that's fine I'll know for next time but I'm going to go ahead and get started so I'm going to mix up and you only have to mix it for like a minute and a half so uh, and, and it has a pretty, pretty quick curing time of 30 minutes so I'm only going to mix one color at a time and pour it and then go on to the next. So I'm gonna get started with the first one. I'm gonna put 30 grams of water in here and I'm gonna add 100 grams of the resin crete and then I'm gonna mix it up. So I'm gonna put you on a pause and I'll be back when I'm mixing so you can see how quickly it mixes together. Okay, so two things. I don't think these cups are gonna be big enough. This is 100 grams of the powder and this is 30 grams of water. So. Um, although I've read lots that said um, it doesn't increase in volume much, so you're not definitely not going to have this much of this of the resin crete. You're going to have more like what's in the water. So I'm going to add this slowly and mix it in. And they did say it would be fairly runny, although. Um, it mixes, it should mix uh, without lumps. I like that it's actually measured by weight rather than by volume. So you can see I added quite a bit of the powder, but I'm not getting a big increase in the volume in my cup here. Now, once you, this is not like the uh, resin polyurethane where, you know, you have two minutes to get it into your mold, but it is a time sensitive material. Uh, can't get the polyurethane where I, uh, here in Canada yet, so I, I'm not able to try that. I wish I could. But I keep checking the Amazon and the Let's Resin site to see if it's going to show up, but it hasn't. Not yet. All right. So I'm just going to continue to stir this for about a minute. Okay, so I finished mixing and I'm going to bring it in a bit. And I poured some into this cup to what I think I'm going to start with this mold, which is, I think it's kind of like a. I don't know, flower, cactus leaf, flower thing. Um, and for this one, I'm going to try, I'm going to try some acrylic paint as well, but I'm going to start with an alcohol ink in a, let's do this one in a, let's do this one in an apple green. So I'm going to try alcohol ink. I'm not sure how many drops I'm going to need. So we'll just kind of drop it in, stir it up and see what we get. Okay. 
So one, two, three, four. Let's start with four, see what color we get. And, <laughs> well, that's not giving me color at all. <laughs> it just ate it right up. Okay, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so now we're at 14 drops. Hmm. I'm going to say alcohol ink, not at least the ones that I have, aren't going to work because I've added quite a bit in there and I'm just not getting any color out of that. All right. So I'm going to say no, unless you have some, like these are like a no name, well, it's not no name, but it's an off brand name I got from Amazon. So maybe, unless you have something that's... Um, maybe stronger. So this is a resin dye. Let's try this instead. It's an opaque dye. See if we have any better luck. It's still pretty white. Okay, I squirted quite a bit in there. <laughs> well, Jesus. I am not having a lot of luck getting color into this, am I? I wasn't going to use mica inks because I didn't really want the shine. I don't want to use all my... Like, I've squirted quite a bit in here. And I'm still not getting... I mean, there's a hint of color. But that's it. Hmm. Well, okay. Let's try some paint. This is not turning out the way I thought it was going to. Oops. Okay. I'm going to try a little bit of paint in there. I might be a disaster in the making. Well, that gave me a little more color. Give me a, a light green. I'm going to add a little bit more. I've watched a few videos of people using this so I could get prepped. I didn't seem to have this much trouble getting color into their... Okay, well, I'm going to try that. So we're going to pour it into the mold. Now these molds have... Ooh, I think that's starting to set up already. Oh, okay. I'm going to poke my stick in there. And that made quite a bit. So I'm just going to squeeze this. See if there's any bubbles in there that I can get to come up. because there is a lot of detail in this little thing. Okay, and I'm, then I'm gonna finish filling it up. And that is thickening up. I'm gonna have to get a move on. Okay, let's do this one next. And I'm gonna add some <clears throat> darker green paint, because they seem to get the most color by adding some paint. So, I'm gonna use the same stuff. And I added some darker green paint, as you can see, and I'm going to pour that into our little cacti here. And, hmm, can I have enough for this one too? Okay. Oops, a little bit of overflow. You can sand this down with uh, just sandpaper. So I'm not too worried that it went over. Let's see if I can pop those little bubbles though. I haven't seen anybody use a lighter on this to get bubbles, so I'm not going to try that. 
Well, maybe I should. Let's not. I'm not wearing gloves. Uh, reading the directions, it didn't say anything about the need for gloves or um, a mask. It is a water-based product. All right, now I've got leftovers. We know that alcohol inks aren't working. I am going to add a little bit of this uh, pigment powder to the green. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> just a second, guys. <laughs> I've the bottom of my cup just disintegrated. <laughs> well, that's interesting. <laughs> Let me clean up this mess. Okay, let's do our next one. I just added a little bit of that blue to the mica or to the resin crate. Uh, I didn't think this stuff would go as far as it has. Okay. Just dip some of that out of there. And again, this is water based, so it's okay to get water in it. need to get this stuff oh no I lost the window for this oh well, maybe not maybe I could just add a little more water to it it was starting to thicken up but when I started stirring it you know how you uh, when you use baking soda and you add water to it and it has that tough surface and then you touch it and it uh, it pokes through it's kind of like that some pink mica to this one here and I'm going to add a tad bit more water oops Ooh, that might have been too much water yes definitely too much water the resin crete, crete to it. There we go. Now I'm just flat out experimenting, aren't I? Okay, we're going to pour this one in here and we're going to see if we can get like two colors. So I'm going to pour this in the top. All right. And I'm just going to look down. It's pretty runny, so it should go down into the, the crevices, but and then I'm going to add the green on top. To see what happens. Okay, so there's that one. 
this one. What color are these normally? I don't know. How about I see if I can add some red mica to it. Oh, maybe some brown. Brown red. How about some brown red? I'm, gonna add, I'm just going to add it into this one that I put the pink in. So that I'm not wasting anything. See what we get. I think I need to get this and need to be done working with this. It's uh, setting up, so I need to get these done. Now I did watch somebody who painted their mold with some uh, chameleon powder and it seemed to work until um, they unmolded it and it was just coming, coming off on their fingers. Okay, that one's done. Uh, I'm going to have to mix up some more. I don't know if I want to put green in there or not. Yeah, what the heck. Okay. So I don't think I would suggest using paper cups for this stuff. Uh, because, like, this one broke through the bottom. So unless you're working really quickly with it, I wouldn't suggest paper cups. Okay, I'm going to wash out this cup and I'm going to mix up at a, another batch and finish. I have two smaller molds left and I have my tray to do. So I'm just going to see if I can get any bubbles hiding in here out. Yeah, that's definitely setting up. Okay, interesting. It is supposed to be demoldable in half hour. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so some updates. Um, I know that it didn't record me making this tray. Um, what I can say is I added too, I must have added too much paint. Um, to this color and it didn't pour smoothly nor did it dry well so when I took it out of the mold it wasn't quite dry and it kind of got a little bit roughed up on the edges so we're going to call this rustic this is our rustic tray <laughs> but you know it's still still not bad lessons learn you know it's a learning curve using any new material and now I know that don't add too much paint but also um, be careful if you do have uh, if you have added paint it might need a little bit longer drying time afterwards I actually poured this one and it came out flawless and all I put in this one was some mica powders and uh, it I'm, you know and I sealed it with some matte Mod Podge that I got from Dollar Tree uh, same with this one yeah, so this one, this one turned out really nice. There's no bubbles, um, has just like a little bit of swirl of color. And on the back where things rise up, it, you can see it looks kind of like, I don't know, it, this material reminds me of a, like a ceramic kind of. All right, so using our rustic tray, I want to finish off our succulent garden. Now I did take this one my mom, this one was this color, and my mom's like, that should be green. So to test it out, I actually just took some green acrylic paint and a dry brush, and I just went over it. Actually, sorry, it wasn't acrylic paint, it was chalk paint. Um, and I just went over it, and it, you know, adhered well, and it's not, it doesn't come off, and I haven't put anything over top of this to finish it. Once I put the chalk paint on, I just left it. Okay, so my thought was to use sand in the tray to put our succulents in. I wasn't sure if I wanted to use white or 
the brown. I might use a little bit of combination of both because I don't want it all brown, but I don't know if I wanted it all white either. So we're going to pour some sand in here. And then th this is just sand I got from our local dollar store. The stuff here is from Dollar Tree. So I might add just a little bit of brown in there just to give it a little bit of color. Because, you know, sand in a desert, I don't think is white. Not that, you know, I live in Canada, I'm not anywhere near a desert, but... Okay, let's try that. So what I'm gonna do, now we want to place our stones. Stones. <laughs> oh, okay, it's, uh, today's actually Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. Okay, so let's see how we want to place now this one I didn't know if it would stand or if I'm going to need to glue it. When I'm done, I'm going to take the phone down so you guys can see. Oh, and I wasn't sure about this one, but I thought I might, just for some interest, put my little skull in there. You guys can let me know in the comments whether you think it should remain. Okay, so I'm going to bring you down. What do you think? Isn't that cute? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Now, it'd be very easy if I wanted to add more succulents to this. I could. Um, but I think I'm just going to put this on my desk. Or maybe even, well, maybe on the coffee table upstairs. I don't want my cats to get into it, but I, I, I like this. All right. So just some final thoughts on the resin crate. Um, I liked working with it. Uh, it's messy. Uh, you can see here my paint, all the mess. This thing was just a total mess, but I did spill it a couple times as well. And um, but very easy cleanup. It's water based. Very easy to mix up. You don't have to wear a mask or anything. Uh, I just washed everything out with uh, warm water and a little bit of soap. Even my molds, my molds all came back. You know, they all, I just washed these in a little bit of soapy water. They're all fine. Let's see. And uh, I enjoyed working with it. I probably used about a third of the bag for this project plus uh, the extra tray that I made. Uh, I got, when I bought it, I got it on sale. It was $20 Canadian, regular 35 on Amazon. So would I pay $35 for it? No, I wouldn't. Uh, but if I saw it go on sale again for 20 bucks, yeah, I would totally purchase it again. Uh, I think it's uh, fun to work with. And um, I would, you know, think of other projects, especially things like this, when you want some to um, de unmold something quickly. <clears throat> I think this is a very nice project for that. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next one.